there, I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com and this is my smart American accent training. Welcome to our live Friday class. We meet every Friday at 12 o'clock Seattle time and I take your questions for American English pronunciation, for American accent, intonation, all of the things that you can learn and use to improve your personal and professional communication in American English. For those of you who've been to class before, welcome back. It's nice to see you. For those of you who are new, the way you can ask questions is by typing them in the chat box, and I go through and look at those, answer them, uh, give you information and resources um, to help you with what you're interested in. People will often ask me how to pronounce certain words or certain sounds, things that they've noticed they struggle with in terms of pronunciation. We also will always have a topic that we're talking about in class. And so the last few weeks, we've been talking about the vowel schwa, which sounds like a, uh, and it's the most frequently used sound in American English. And many, many non-native speakers have accent error patterns on this sound. It's a sound that isn't in some languages and also is different in some languages. So we'll look a little bit today at where we find this, what words it's in, how it's spelled, how to look up words in the dictionary and recognize this sound, and how it affects longer words and intonation. So those are some of the topics for today's class. Of course, as well, we'll be answering your questions. So oftentimes we talk more about your questions. We don't have as much time for my topics, which is fine because the questions that you have, the things you ask me in this class and in the comments you leave me in on my videos, on my website, Speech Modification, and on Facebook, really help me know um, what videos to make, what lessons to talk about, and how to help you best. For those of you who are watching the replay on Facebook, when I play those replays, you can ask your questions in the comments on Facebook. And uh, so anyway, welcome everybody. I'm excited to see everyone. And hi to you guys. So I'll start in by talking a little bit again about vowel schwa. And for those of you who've been here the last few weeks, I'll try not to repeat myself too much. For those of you who are new, I just want to show you um, a little bit about this sound. So the vowel schwa sounds like a. Uh. It's just a very basic sound. The way I make this sound is that my tongue is relaxed and central in my mouth. So it's not touching the top or the bottom. When I say, uh, my jaw is slightly open. It's not very wide open. And it's not very tight, tightly closed. And this is the sound that Americans make when they are using little fillers when they're trying to talk, like, um, uh, when they're thinking, because it's basically the resting place for the tongue for an American English speaker's speaker. And in other languages, they make other little sounds as fillers. Uh, and they, I just did one, uh, and they reflect where the, the sound system is kind of organized in that language. So the way it's spelled, if I'm spelling just the sound in the dictionary, you can actually look this up and it'll say, uh, and that just means they'll describe that that's a sound that we make when we're thinking. And, uh, the, symbols for vowel schwa, there are two. So one looks like that, an upside down E, and one looks like that. They both say this uh, sound. The difference is this one is held for a short time and this one is held for a long time. Some people might argue that there's a slight difference in how and where we make these sounds in the mouth, but I think that level of detail, the most important thing is being able to make that relaxed uh sound. And the example word I'd like to use is the word above because it has both the short and the long schwa. This one is in the stressed syllable of above. The second syllable, above, is long. And this one is in the unstressed syllable of above. So if I see that in the dictionary, it'll look like this, above. And this little line tells me that the second syllable is stressed in the word above. And I like to write lines underneath so I can hear about how they are short and long above. So one of the things we'll look at today is other words where the first syllable is an unstressed schwa. For example, in the word opinion, we have the same sound. We have a schwa, 
opinion and second syllable stress. So I have a short re reduced a uh sound at the start of opinion. Again, you can see it's spelled in many words with different letters and different sounds. So this, this is kind of one of those sounds that I call a hidden sound in English where I may not recognize it based on the spelled letters. Uh, so we'll look at other common words with those sounds and particularly today I want to focus on some of those longer words like above and opinion with the unstressed schwa. But I do also want to answer your question. So let's see what we have so far. We have a question of about the pronunci pronunciation of tourist and also the vowel uh, that is in book and took. Okay, so in tourist, tourist, the way I say that word is I use just a vowel u, tu, tour, and then I have to move into my vowel er, and then, um, or an R, tour, you can write it different ways. So this is more thinking about it as tour, and this tu tourist. So there is kind of a, um, a schwa or an er sound there before the vowel. So uh, your question was specifically about the whole word tourist. So I think you can either say tourist with an oo, or you can say tourist with more of an uh or an er. So there are multiple pronunciations for tourist, tourist. I think tourist is clearest so that you know what we're saying. If, if I was using tourist, tourist, I'm using more of the vowel you were mentioning, the uh vowel, which is in words like book and, I forget your other word, uh, book and took. So the confusing part about this vowel is that it's often spelled, or it's sometimes spelled with OO. Most of the time when you see two O's, you have the O vowel. Some, in some words like book, took, stood, would, a few others, you have the U uh vowel, which is the same vowel as in push and could. So often this is spelled with letter U or letter OU like in could and would. Good. Okay, so I have uh, several videos about those vowels and some word lists on my website where you can see which words that are spelled with the letters OO say uh and which ones say oo. And that's a common accent error pattern. So thank you for your question. And his second word was the word error. And this is quite a challenging word. I've talked about it in class before. First, I like to, for error, I like to think about um, I really want to be able to establish my tight back American er sound. Um, so even though it's spelled with O-R, error has an er for the second vowel. And for the first vowel, it has the diphthong er. So I'm saying it as error, error. Um, so if I can build from the back, er, then I might actually put my R on and try rer, and then error, error. My video for, I think, rural and some of my other videos with R and L, difficult words, might help you with error. It is on my list uh, to make a video just about that word to break it down further and help you with that. So thank you. Hi, nice to see you, Carolina. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. We have a question for Tuesday and Thursday. So Tuesday, I was just working with someone on this yesterday, <laughs> and Thursday. So Tuesday, I have U vowel, twos and a Z sound. Day, I want to make sure my A is long, that I have that diphthong there, Tuesday. And it has first syllable stress, short, long, short, Tuesday. Versus Thursday, I have my TH sound, th, er, I have my vowel er, thurs, and then same. Thursday, short, long, Tuesday and Thursday. I believe I have videos uh, for all of the days of the week. I do know I have a video specifically about Tuesday because I'm talking about syllable stress in that word. So um, I'll just show you uh, both on my website and on my channel page, you can use the search tools. So if you're on speechmodification.com, um, you can go, uh, 
several places to search. The best one is to use the online practice page. So up in the top menu, you'll see that there's a free practice button and you wanna pull down to go to online practice free trial. And then you'll see that there's a search box. So for example, if I type uh, Tuesday in the search box, perhaps that's my word, or maybe I would type um, error or American R and find the lessons, then the lessons related to that will come up. And this is <laughs> talking about my Tuesday classes, which are coming up. Uh, so at any rate, you can use the search terms and it'll pull up lessons related to that. There's also, if you're a subscriber on my channel page, there's a search box for specific videos on my channel page on um, Speech Modification Seattle. And if you're looking for a particular video or lesson, you can also leave comments in this class on any of my videos and I'll help you find the information. I do have quite a bit of information, videos and lessons, and sometimes it's hard to find precisely what you're looking for, so I'm always happy to help. Um, Bernice wants to know how to pronounce the word advantage. Advantage. Um, so this is a nice example of a long word that's going to have some schwa sounds. Um, and I think in advantage, I think in that unstressed first syllable, advantage, I use more of an e eh or an i eh vowel, advantage. Um, then I have the clear vowel a, ah, like in black cat, va, vantage. And then at the end, I think again, I have the unstressed um, i eh vowel, advantage. Uh, Let's look this one up in the dictionary because in some of these shorter unstressed syllables, we either will have the schwa, which sounds like a, uh, but I definitely don't think I use that one in the beginning. In the end here, I might say advantage with, with an a uh, schwa sound. Uh, the other vowel sound that goes in unstressed syllables is this vowel i. It's in words like did and different, and it's another light Rela uh, lax vowel that's quick and short in duration. But I will show you that uh, I tend to look up words myself to verify how I say them and to determine um, the best advice to give you. And I like to use the Oxford Learner's Dictionary for this because it uh, has audio recordings that I can listen to, as well as it will show me British English, Advan. I can't multitask here, advantage. Um, it'll show me the British English pronunciation as well as the American English pronunciation. And you may find, oh, maybe the way you learned English, you learned more of the British pronunciation. Um, you can use either. Okay, so it actually does show, you can see these upside down E's, that's my vowel schwa. It actually does show it as being an uh sound, advantage. Um, I think I use a little bit more of an i sound. So this is the British and this is the American. And they also show it ha having vowel i in the last syllable. So this, if I did this technically exactly the way it's written, it would be advantage, advantage. And again, oftentimes it's really hard to tell whether you're doing advantage or advantage for that first sound. So le let's listen to this recording. I'll turn up the volume so you can hear it. Advantage. So advantage. I do think she did more of an advantage with an uh schwa sound. Um, and that may just be a difference. Um, as I said, the most important thing is that I'm stressing on van, that I'm using a clear vowel there. And whether I'm saying advantage or advantage doesn't make that big of a difference. The most important thing is having that um, length, that stress. I'm going to show you a technique for second syllable stress words that I was thinking about for opinion and advantage, where, um, for example, on the word opinion, people often will have trouble saying that schwa, that a uh sound, for the letter O, because when they see the letter O, they think they should be saying opinion with an O. And so um, if I take the stress syllable and I just start the word with only that syllable, so if I try pinion, pinion, 
And then I think about as though I were adding the word a, like opinion was a thing. So I might say, for example, a friend. And uh, if I say this one the same way, opinion, opinion, uh, then I'm actually pronouncing the word opinion correctly. So it's the same vowel. It's vowel schwa for the word a uh, and also for the unstressed first syllable. So that's one technique that often will help people remember and change their pronunciation to use that correct schwa in the unstressed position in the beginning of words. Great. Thank you for the great questions. I hope that that was a thorough enough explanation for advantage. Now we have a question. Um, I'm losing track. I have to go back and find your question. Okay. Um, the question is, would you say that the second vowel in the O and AO diphthongs is more like the U sound as in food than U? Uh? To me, it sounds like U or the consonant W. Okay. Yes, this is a great question. So we have some diphthongs in English. O and AO. Ow. And we often spell those with O-W. For example, snow, um, no, etc. And ow, we, we spell that um, with, also with O-W. That's a little bit confusing, as in cow and brown. And the W spelling reflects that for both of these, I start on a tense vowel, and then I close and reduce the size of my lips. So if I'm saying go go, you can see that I have rounded lips and my jaw closes on this second vowel. If I said these vowels separately, o, u, o, u, and then I glide them together, o, o, you can hear how that u uh sound can sound similar to a w or an, a u sound. Um, I don't hear that as much in when I'm saying, for, some, for example, go. I don't hear it as go, go. I guess I do a little bit. Basically what you're hearing there is that the mouth is closing and the lips are closing a little more. The reason it's not written this way is that the vowel needs to be more relaxed. So if I stay tense, go, um, then it alters how that sounds. Or ow, ow. This one definitely sounds more like an oo to me than an uh. So I wouldn't worry too much about what vowel you end on. You just want to make sure you have that length. You start from a tense rounded vowel, and you close your jaw a little bit and relax to get to the second part of the diphthong. Um, those are those can be tricky, but a lot of times, especially with the O, just lengthening vowel, the vowel longer, you'll naturally close as you move into the next word. Um, good question. Thank you. Um, uh, we have a question about something that's not really a word, I don't think. Uh, so I'm going to skip that one. Um, we have a question for explaining how to make the American R sound. Uh, all right, I will um, go into that a little bit. This is definitely something where I would suggest I, ha I have a full playlist about American R because it's uh, fairly complex. So I'm going to give you the very brief version, and then I'm going to say uh, have videos helping you build this many different ways. So there are a couple of different ways that the American R is formed, but the most important thing to know is that in a lot of other languages, the R is formed by lifting the front of the tongue, and it sounds more like R. In American English, the back of the tongue is what makes the R sound, and the back of the tongue needs to be tight and braced against the insides of the upper teeth. I can feel that if I start with a G sound and then go into an R sound, for example, saying grr, grr, I can feel my teeth, my tongue is tight and it stays braced against my teeth. Some people make that R by curling the front of the tongue into a cup shape. And that sounds like err. I don't make it that way. You can hear how mine doesn't sound that good. I make mine by bunching the back of my tongue up and it sounds like err. Another view of that, Here's the front R, R. You can see the tongue is touching up and the air can escape from the sides. Versus R, the front of my tongue does not touch up. It either curls or bunches down. And the most important thing is this tension with my tongue pushing against my upper teeth. So I have some videos that will walk you through building it from the sound and into words. And also um, a number of videos for R together with other sounds 
for R in the middle and the ends of words, how it's different from British R. So check out my American R playlist, or if you go to speechmodification.com, to the free practice site, you can type in American R and you'll see a lot of lessons helping you build that new R sound. So that was a very quick explanation, but hopefully it gave you a, a place to start and you can um, take, a, take advantage of those other resources as well. Um, we have a question about, excuse me, the difference between the schwa, uh, and the, this one, the longer, uh, I think that's a symbol for the er, um, that we use in words like person. So the, the main difference between schwa and er is that schwa mm -hmm. is relaxed, it's a lax vowel, and my tongue is flat, and er mm -hmm. has the braced tongue that we were just looking at for the American R sound. Um, I have to verify and double check that that's another way that we write the er, because I think actually maybe this is the er. So this is like the long, this might be another way to write this symbol, the uh symbol. I'll have to get back to you on that because different dictionaries use different symbols and there's different levels of the IPA symbols, which is what I use on my website. Um, so I don't want to give you incorrect information. So let me check on that and get back to you. Um, we have a question about how to pronounce terrible. So terrible. This one has the air diphthong, even though it just looks like an ER. It has first syllable stress. So long, short, short, terrible. And it has the vowel I in the middle syllable and a syllabic L, which sounds kind of like bull, bull with a dark L at the end, terrible. Um, I have videos to help you with dark L if that might be your issue um, or your challenge. And also words that have R and L can be difficult. This one isn't so terrible <laughs> because the R and the L have some sounds in between them so it makes it slightly easier. Um, just make sure that you're holding the air part of terrible long enough so that we can really hear what that word is. Um, a question about the D sound, maybe ask me something a little bit more specific to know what you mean about D. Basically, I make D by lifting the front of my tongue in the same spot that I make the T. T -t American D, the tongue doesn't touch the teeth, it touches behind the teeth and the voice is on. D um, okay, combination of TH and R, something else I have a video for, and typically what I'll say is, in my video I talk about words like three and through, um, and also words like together and weather. So we have TH and R at the beginning, we have TH and R at the end, this one just sounds like ther, this one sounds like thr. In both cases, mastering the R first is going to really help you with both of these. Also, working on TH by itself and working on R by itself and having a pretty solid TH and a pretty solid R before I putting them together. Once you can do TH words and R words to put them together, start by using just the R sound because if my tongue isn't ready for the R sound, it's not gonna be able to make the THR sound. The th is forward with the tongue between the teeth, whereas as we talked about just a minute ago, the R, er, my tongue is pulled back and tight. So to do th, r, th, r, to get that three, three, the back of my tongue has to almost already be in the R position with just the front coming forward for the little TH. The easiest way to do that is to say re, Re, feel the tongue, and then add the TH after. So you're priming your mouth to be ready to do the R. Re, three. So uh, even if it sounds a little funny, re, three, really focus on getting that R tight and then move more and more forward so you can add the TH sound. At the end, same thing. I would to do er and then ther, ther. There I have a little more time to get into the er because um, it's uh, unstressed syllable about the end. So, but building these words from the back, er, ther, weather, er, ther, together, can really help you get those motor patterns you need to put the th and r sounds together. They are, they can be very challenging, definitely. So thank you for your question. 
Um, we have a question about, well, thank you for being patient, everyone. I, there's a lot of questions today, so I may not be able to get to all of them. I will try to pick and choose and highlight, and uh, I will make note of them, though, and anything I can't cover today we'll talk about in next week's class as well. So we have a question about the words comfortable and important, and for you, I'm going to say that you should go to my channel page. So uh, after the class, go to speech modification and you'll find um, that I have a search box there. And you can go and you can type in comfortable and you can type in important because I have a video for each of those words and that'll break down exactly how to say them for you. You can also find that um, if you go to speechmodification.com and go to the free trial and you can see here, here's my search box. I'm just going to type in comfortable. And because people, many people have this challenge, um, you'll find that there's a video and a lesson for that or also for important. And not only do um, will you find the video for those words, it's going to talk about the patterns in those words that make those words challenging and how and it'll give you links to other resources so you can look at that word oftentimes knowing why a word is difficult you can work on that word and you can also work on that pattern in general that's going to help you on your difficult word as well as helping you with your overall pronunciation because you'll be able to tell why that word is difficult and what's different about it so using those resources will lead you to other links and other lessons that you'll find helpful <clears throat> um, we have a question about intonation. I'm going to save your question for next week, and I apologize for not having time for it today, but I want to um, give you a better, more thorough answer about intonation. My short answer is going to be that I have an intonation playlist uh, on the channel page, and if you check that out, it'll walk you through some of the basic steps as well as giving you a lot of details for specifics with intonation. So it's something that you can build on, um, begin to use, and I'll in those videos I talk about techniques for hearing and using intonation, as well as breaking down some of the rules. I also have lessons for that on my website as well. Um, and uh, let's see, next question. Um, we have a request, videos of listen and repeat sentences in the American accent. Um, yes, great way to learn while cooking or doing different tasks. Definitely, thank you for the suggestion, and I will look into um, some ways to do that for you. Um, some of my videos uh, walk through those steps for specific sounds, and um, I definitely think imitating is very, very helpful. One of the things you might want to do is check out the free practice on speech modification because I have some um, audio files there for listening, so you can look at particular patterns and listen and repeat sentences um, there. So, But I like your suggestion, and I'll make note of it. Thank you. Um, we have a question about opportunity, um, and I believe I have a video about this one as well. Let's just look at it really quickly. So opportunity as... Um, third syllable stress, opportunity, five syllables all together. And the O in this word says vowel ah, so thinking about that as an ah sound, ah, per, even though this is an O-R, it has the E-R sound, opportune. We have the oo, clear oo vowel there, so I could write it this way, tune. And then at the end, it's challenging because we have the I and the E sounds together, opportunity, and Americans will make a flap um, with that T sound, so it sounds a little bit more like a light D. Opportunity, opportunity. Um, great. Um, in the word month is the letter N between the teeth because it's followed by a TH. So when I say month, month, I do have my tongue already ready for the TH position. This is the same thing that I do if I'm saying a phrase like in the or on the because it's too hard to go in the and move my tongue or in your word, 
month, month. If I had to do month and put my tongue behind my teeth for the correct end position or for the standard end position, month, it would take too long to get my tongue back out for the TH. So instead of the tip of my tongue closing behind my teeth to make the N mm sound, I'm, I'm closing that. I'm still making the N sound behind my teeth, but with something further back on my tongue, month, month, and the tip of my tongue is ready and in position for the TH. So you're still sealing off the air behind your teeth with your tongue. It's just that you're doing further back on the tongue so the front of your tongue is ready, month. And that's the same thing I do in phrases where I have a word ending with an N and the next word starting with a TH. That makes it much easier when I link in the and on the, I can say it much more fluently and still accurately make my N and my TH sounds. So that's a good observation. We also do that in words like ninth and month. Very good. Um, okay, so, wow. So many great questions today. Um, I'm gonna take a few more and then I need to wrap up because I try to keep the class to be about half an hour. I really appreciate all the wonderful questions. Thank you so much, everyone. And so I'll make note that um, we'll be talking next time about the words correctly and exactly. I'm not gonna cover those today. Um, Question about the I as in sit vowel coming right after, after a consonant. How does it sound? Um, so the example was this, li. Um, if I'm, if that's, it depends on the word. If I have another consonant, lit. If I'm saying um, Lisa, it's gonna be an E. So um, if I just had li by itself, people would typically say li. If I have li and a consonant, it could be, um, it could be many different vowel sounds. Um, we had a question about whether I close my teeth when I pronounce the letter S and Z, like some and zoo. Uh, some, so my teeth, my back teeth are apart, some, some. Um, if I closed my teeth, some, some, it would, would the sound, the s uh, sound and the z sound, not be able to come out. So my tongue is behind my teeth. They are lightly close together, but there's some space between them for my jaw. Um, you can look at my S and Z videos for a little bit more help for the tongue position for those sounds. Um, so great, thank you. Uh, we have a question about gray or gray. That's just a spelling difference. So British English, they tend to spell it this way, gray. American English, we spell it gray, but it's they're pronounced the same. And both of these spellings are correct in English and in American English, but this one's more typical for American. Um, so we have a question about how long it takes to be proficient in the accent. That's very variable because it depends on where you're starting from. It depends on how much practice you have, how many opportunities you have to speak English. Um, and of course, people have different level of skill, just like in learning languages, some people seem to have an easier time of it and some people have to work harder at it. Um, in general, I would say if you work on your accent every day and do uh, efficient and effective practice, a small bit every day, you'll notice changes in your speech in three weeks, in a month, in six weeks. You won't be fluent, <laughs> have a fluent American accent. If you did work on it every day, you had the right support, the right feedback, probably six months to a year is a reasonable expectation for shifting over into almost native-like accent. But that would be someone who really was working extremely hard and is very dedicated. But I think um, in order to be able to speak more fluently and be well understood in English, it doesn't take that much time. The most important thing is to identify the patterns that are really interfering with being well understood and to focus your efforts and your practice there. So one of the things I'm gonna recommend for you and for anyone looking to improve their communication is that um, I have some online courses um, and I'm excited to say that I'm also gonna be teaching a group online class that's gonna go hand in hand with my online course the one I'm gonna recommend, if you go to the courses page on speech modification, is my um, six-week course. 
because this will walk you through the fundamentals of how to practice, what to prioritize, how to use um, your time efficiently, and how to practice for a real change. You can um, subscribe to this for under $5 a month. It's very inexpensive, and um, you can get a free trial for two weeks. So check it out and see if you like it. This is going to be the textbook that I use in my group class. So here in the Seattle area, I've been teaching six-week classes, um, and we come together as a group and we practice. Now those are canceled because we're staying at home and we're self-isolating, but I'm going to resurrect the class. I'm going to be holding it again in an online format. And the good news about that is that you can join if you're here in the Seattle area, or if you're elsewhere in the world, you can also join. So um, you can find some information about that on speechmodification.com. And I'll put the link here in the chat for you um, if you're interested in checking that out. You can send me an email if you have questions about it, but I'm hoping that some of you will want to come and join. It's a good opportunity for me to actually see you and hear you and give you specific feedback and help for your speech and learning in a group context of how to take some of these steps to begin to change and improve your pronunciation. So um, I hope you'll check that out. That's going to be starting in the beginning of May, and right now it's scheduled for Tuesday mornings, Seattle time. If I get a lot of feedback that people would prefer a different time, I may consider changing that time. So let me know what you think. And um, thank you so much, everyone else, for your questions. I'm going to stop here, and what I'll do is after class, I'm going to make notes on what I didn't have time to answer today, and I'll bring those topics up next week so that you make sure I'll make sure to get your answer. If I have a quick video for you or solution for you, Stay tuned and come back to the lesson and check out the comments because I will give you your answers and tell you where to look for those in, for that information in those comments. Um, thanks everyone for the wonderful questions and we had a little bit of talk about vowel schwa at the beginning. We'll probably look at vowels and difficult pronunciation again next week and of course we'll be taking your questions about uh, American English pronunciation. So thanks everyone for being a part of class. I'm Christine Dunbar from speechmodification.com. Remember, if you want to sound American, you can do it. Speechmodification.com. Okay, see you next week, guys. Bye-bye.